Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, 10 Emerging Design Strategies for Higher Ed. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items just so you know how to participate in today's event. All attendees are in listen-only mode, which means we will be muted during the presentation. By default, audio is played through your computer. But if you would like to prefer to join over the phone, select telephone in the audio pane and dial-in information will then be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the panel to the left of the screen. You may send your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them after the presentation. Now on to your presenters. All right, hi guys and welcome. We're so excited that you're here. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're really excited to get the chance to discuss the 10 emerging design strategies for higher ed thus far. Um, and I am here with Sarah Eckert. Sarah, if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Yeah, hi, my name is Sarah Eckert. I'm the Director of Creative Operations here at Capture Higher Ed. Um, I've been at Capture for close to six years now um, with a total of 10 years in the higher education space. All right, and my name is Chelsea Greider. I am a senior graphic designer here at Capture Higher Ed, and I've been working here for about four years. And, um, you know, I've been working on designing all your marketing materials. Um, and yeah, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. All right, um, so staying on top of the latest design trends is important for everybody, no matter your job title. So whether you're a designer or in enrollment, I feel like it's always important to stay on top of the latest design trends and stay relevant. Um, understanding how styles are changing and evolving will definitely help your brand stay fresh and resonate with your current students and future, future students as well. Knowing the latest trends can also help you stay ahead of the curve, try something new, and even find success in your marketing and enrollment strategies. All right, so today we're going to talk about a few different trends that we've seen. 2019 will definitely be an exciting year for design. Um, it seems like we say that every year, but there are just always so many cool new things out there and we're super excited to go through them. So we put together this list of the top 10 trends that we think are going to have the greatest impact on higher ed this year. So let's get right into it. All right, drum roll, starting off with number one. All right, this one's kind of cool and interesting. So this is all about augmented and virtual reality. Um, and currently it's shaking up the creative industry. Um, so while AR and VR are often grouped together as one category, they're actually quite different. And I actually didn't even know what the differences were until I started doing research on these trends. Um, so with virtual reality, you become immersed in an artificial digital environment, typically through donning glasses or a headset, which I'm sure you guys have seen tons of pictures of people wearing like the crazy little headsets. Um, and then AR is actual reality, um, where it's enhanced by overlaying virtual objects onto the real world environment, often through using your smartphone. So think about um, Pokemon Go, like the app that was really big where you used your phone to kind of like look around the room and you'd see objects pop up that weren't actually there. So that's kind of how to tell the difference between the two. So AR and VR are taking over the higher education community as well. And um, especially in the world of recruitment, as we can see here in the picture on the slide, um, colleges and universities have already started creating new ways for students to interact with marketing material beyond the traditional view book, which is really cool. Um, they've developed AR and VR experiences for potential students. And um, here we can see that in the picture um, with my alma mater, I actually went to the Savannah College of Art and Design. And so that's the example that I'm using here. They used VR to help students get an idea of what their story could be like at SCAD. So they ma mailed out these Google Cardboard headsets, which you can see in the slide, um, and they sent them to accepted students so they could visually explore the school's campuses in Atlanta, Savannah, Hong Kong, and Lacoste. There's four different campuses. Um, so let's say, there's a student who's in California, really far away from Savannah and can't visit, they can use these goggles to get a good idea of what campus would be like if they actually attended the school. And they've even recently expanded on this idea to produce the industry's first AR-driven college catalog. Users of SCAD's new catalog can view videos of students' creative sessions, they can play uh, student design video games, tour residence halls, learn about degree programs, even um, live chat with admissions. So I think it's really cool what they're doing. 
All right. And so you're probably wondering, how in the world can I get started? How can I like do this for my school? Um, well, the first step would be to collaborate with your marketing team internally or if you use an agency and um, see if there's any type of way you could transform your view book or campus tour into an impressive virtual reality experience for prospective students. Um, like the example, you could uh, maybe use Google Cardboard viewers, um, which are surprisingly relatively affordable, or you could even outsource to a company that specializes in virtual campus tours like UVisit, which I'm sure that you've heard of, and I'm sure there's other companies similar to that, which they could help you and do most of the work for you. Mm -hmm. All right, on to the next. All right. So while Millennial Pink was the color for 2018, um, this year a bolder color is taking over and that is Gen Z Yellow. Um, this color is well on its way to becoming the next big thing and you're about to see it everywhere. So Gen Z Yellow isn't really so much one specific color, but kind of a collection of shades of yellow. Anything from neon to school bus to highlighter yellow. It kind of came about as part of Gen Z's way of making their mark, a way for them to really show the world who they perceive themselves to be, which is fun, vibrant, and bold, and just, you know, very different than the generations before them. And this, so this yellow was all over the 2019 award show red carpets. And if you're a royal watcher, both the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, and the Duchess of Windsor, Kate Middleton, were recently spotted getting in on the trend. Looking fabulous at that. Of course, <laughs> they always look fabulous. Um, and of course, for better or worse, when celebrities or royals are part of a trend, it, you know it's pretty likely that it's gonna take over the rest of the world pretty soon. So outside of fashion, which is what we're really looking at here, um, Gen Z Yellow is turning up in the design world in branding and packaging and just all over the place, kind of like in the examples that we're showing here. We've also seen more and more websites using it as one of their website's main colors. So if you wanna get started with this trend, um, try emphasizing the yellow that might already be in your brand palette just a little bit more in an upcoming campaign. Um, or if yellow isn't one of your brand colors, you can start small and try using Gen Z yellow as part of an event promotion. That way there's a low amount of risk and commitment so you can kind of test the waters before you just jump right in. Cool. All right. So now I'm going to talk about number three, which is brands are becoming more and more hyper personalized. And you guys have probably seen this um, even with students forging personal connections with your school and institution before even beginning to step foot on your guys's campus. So to age in forging that connection, wouldn't you guys want to curate a personalized experience for each student and their interests? All right. Let's dive a little bit deeper. So demand for personalization is on the rise. It seems like everything these days can be personalized. And there are even brands that are completely built around that personalization. Sarah, weren't you telling me about yeah. a brand? Yeah, I actually, and it's it's funny because it was from a Facebook ad. So FYI, Facebook ads do work, they, <laughs> at least on me. Um, it was for a shampoo company called Pros. And what you do is you go to their website and you tell them what hair color, hair type, you have um, even your location by your zip code and it will formulate this special shampoo and conditioner that's just for your hair because apparently, you know, the air and the water is a little bit different based on location. So it's just like a hyper personalized shampoo and conditioner that was really cool. That's so cool. I really want to try that. Yeah, it awesome. worked really well. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, multiple brands are using personalization to stand out to consumers. Um, in the digital space, personalization is even more important. And that's why tactics like digital display advertising and marketing automation are becoming so popular. Um, they use data to personalize messaging so the right people are getting the right message at the right time. Personalization is making these messages more meaningful and more timely, which in turn will make those messages resonate even more with your students and potential students. So um, how to get started with this? Um, some of you guys might actually already be doing it, um, and you may not even know that you're doing it. Um, but if you're not already, try sending a more personalized piece of direct mail. Most printing companies can help you get started with variable data printing. And um, that actually doesn't just have to be with text. There's so many other ways that you can incorporate personalization, as you can see in the slide 
Um, you can even like switch out images, like mm -hmm. depending on the person that the, who's getting it. Um, and then there's marketing automation tools like Capture CBE, where Capture uses data and marketing automation to enable institutions to go hy hyper personalized. Tools such as digital display advertising, personalized email, smart direct mail, and responsive landing pages can help make a more meaningful and timely connection with your potential students. So next on here, um, it's all about animation or GIFs. And yes, I'm in the GIF camp, but that's a discussion for another day. I know that's a very controversial <laughs> discussion sometimes. It's not GIF. GIF is peanut butter. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we definitely believe that they're GIFs. But anyway, GIFs or motion graphics and animations are a great tool for communicating while also making the content more engaging. They're not really a new thing though. They've been a staple on Tumblr especially and other social media sites for quite a while now, but now they're really coming into their own in marketing communications. And with diminishing attention spans, having some movement in an otherwise static environment is a great way to capture attention. It's also really good to use when you need to try to show a bunch of information in a really small space. Um, I know there are some program names that are always very long, and so if you're trying to do a banner advertisement, trying to cram that whole thing into one small mobile banner ad can be really difficult. So this is also a good time to use animation. So to get started with this, um, this is actually another relatively easy one to really get started. So try using some kind of animation in your next email blast. You can use them to draw attention to a video by turning a short clip of that video into an animation, kind of like in this example that we did for Sweetbriar College. Um, I think they work the best for campus visit messages. Um, you know, a five second clip of a campus tour video on a popover or even an email, it, it makes it a little bit more engaging than just a static photo. Um, and so these are just a couple of the ways that we've used animation here at Capture to enhance our communications. All right, so moving on to number five, we have responsive logos. Um, and I'm sure you guys have probably heard of responsive websites before. I'm sure your college and institution probably has a website that is responsive. Um, and that is actually, if you don't know what that is, that's actually where the site is able to shift to accommodate different screen sizes. So um, your website is going to look different, you know, on your computer screen, on your iPad or on your phone. Um, but now responsive logos are becoming increasingly important with Gen Z and their mobile world. So to get a good idea of what they are, I'll go ahead and go to the next slide where you guys can kind of see and visualize what a responsive logo is. Um, so as you know, Gen Z, they're always on their phone. And so with the rapid growth of mobile device usage across variations of screen sizes, it's becoming less acceptable to create just one logo and scale it down um, with the changing screen sizes. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of your institution logos are, you know, usually they feature like a building or something like that, which is great and awesome and beautiful. But whenever it's on a small, tiny mobile screen, you know, some of that can kind of get lost. Mm -hmm. Um, so logos are becoming more adaptive, um, containing several versions for mobile, tablet, and desktop devices and beyond. So as you can see in the example that I'm showing, um, Coke, Chanel, Disney, they're all moving towards responsive logos. Um, so as you can see, like the smallest logo is what would be on the mobile version. And you can still tell what it is, which makes it really cool. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right, so we can go ahead and go to the next slide and I can kind of tell you all how to get started with this. Um, so if your institution is ready to start creating a logo that will shine on all devices, what you need to get started is carefully examine your institution's logo and remove anything that's not necessary without losing the connection to your brand identity. So in summary, the aim of this process is to remove any intricate or ornate details that won't show up as well on smaller devices. And this is honestly a great exercise to do with any logo, even if the primary reason isn't to just create a responsive logo. When the words and extra pieces are removed, is what's left still recognizable? Yeah, that's a really cool thing to do with pretty much any logo because it helps, you know, you see the iconic logos like Nike or mm -hmm. some of these others yeah. and they use just such a small piece of it. Yeah, um, so it's, it's really cool. Simplicity, yeah. All right, so moving on to, okay, this is actually my personal favorite on this list, mm -hmm. gradients. I love gradients. 
Um, and as you can tell from our presentation design, <laughs> we love gradients here at Capture, Capture just as much. Too. <laughs> yeah. So this trend is even more about brightly colored gradients. Some of the most recent examples of this trend you've probably seen in action are Instagram's logo redesign, which we're showing here, which uses a really bright gradient in its primary version. And you've got Spotify over here with all of their bright colors and bright gradients that they use in just about all of their graphics. Um, playlist graphics, promos, pretty much everything has these really bright colors. So this is another sort of easy one that you can get started with. And if you want to incorporate Gen Z yellow, this is also a great way to do that too. Um, you can jump right in using one of these really bright gradients here or with that Gen Z yellow if you want to just go, you know, just go for it and see what happens. Or if you want to be a little bit more conservative, um, you can try something a little bit more subtle. So to be more subtle, take one of your brand colors and just transition that from the brand color to a slightly darker version of it. Um, and that way, you know, there's not as much commitment. It's not so off brand that it seems weird or anything. Um, and you can try it in your next social media post is just a way to ease into it. All right, so moving on, um, new to the world of fonts and typography is color fonts. And I actually hadn't even heard of this until I started doing research. It's super cool. Um, so I'm sure you um, have seen in most fonts, you know, Helvetica Times New Roman, whenever you download the font and use it in whatever program you're using, you know, it's all in one color, you know, black, mm -hmm. you can choose whatever color it is. Um, but color fonts actually incorporate details such as different colors, gradients and gradients. textures. Yes, gradients again. <laughs> we keep going back to I our know. trends, I love it. <laughs> They're all interwoven. All right, um, but yeah, so they incorporate colors, gradients, textures, all into one single font file, which as a designer, I love, sounds amazing. Um, so much easier. I know, so I much it. less work too. <laughs> um, they can even include vector shapes and bitmap images all within one file, which is pretty cool. These fonts can not only be used in print, but they can also be used in various web browsers and apps as well. So as you can see in this slide, there's a few examples of color fonts that are being used today. Um, and actually you and your design team can go out there and start downloading these fonts and using them for various projects. Um, free fonts, free color, blah, sorry, free color fonts that are out there are Fix a Color, Abalone, and Gilbert font that are all displayed in this slide. All right, so how can you start using these? Um, like I said, um, they're free. Well, there's a few that are free to download and you guys can start exploring ways to work them into your brand. And um, I would say for color fonts, maybe, you know, don't use them everywhere, um, but it'd probably mm -hmm. be a good idea to maybe promote like specific events on campus for posters, anything fun like that. So keeping on the subject of fonts, the next trend that we want to go over is serif fonts. Now, Serifs are making a huge comeback right now. For the last few years, it was really all about the sans serif because, you know, they were the go-to just because they were seen as being a lot more modern. But that's starting to change. Serifs are coming back, and they're very reminiscent of the golden age of printing when type was set, you know, letter by letter in a printing press. It was a very manual process, but there's still something nostalgic and kind of classy about that that people still remember. Um, now, if you're not familiar with design speak, you're probably wondering what serifs actually are. Um, so the, probably the easiest way to explain what they are, serifs are kind of like the, the small, edgy, pointy things on the edges of the letters. Um, if you look at the image on this slide, they're the pieces that are highlighted in green. So it gives you kind of a visual representation. Um, one of the most well-known serif fonts is Times New Roman um, versus one of the most well-known sans serif fonts in Arial. So if you look at the two different ones and compare them, you can kind of see what the differences are. So to get started using this trend, um, this is probably one of the easiest ones. Many institutions already have a serif font as part of their brand. So getting started is probably going to be just as simple as using that brand font in your arsenal. Um, but if your brain doesn't include a serif, try using one for an upcoming event campaign. Um, it sounds like we're kind of a bit of a broken record here, <laughs> just, you know, going with event campaigns or one-off campaigns, but you can always just start small. And that's really the message with a lot of these things. If you're wanting to get out of your comfort zone, you don't have to go 
crazy with it, you can start pretty small. Um, so try pairing a serif font with your current sans serif and go with that if you need to try to establish something like history, authority, quality, class, or anything like that, because serifs are seen as being a lot more formal than the sans serifs. Um, and designers, just a side note, even if you're working with a serif that you're not really crazy about, there are still plenty of ways to keep it interesting. Um, one thing that I like to do with a serif font, if it seems like it's getting a little bit stale, is to try different kerning or letter spacing, just to kind of give it a little bit of a different look so that can keep everything fresh. Cool, that's a good tip. All right, um, so I personally really like this one. I am a graphic designer in my full-time job, but I also dabble in photography. Um, so for this one, we're gonna be talking about 3D still life elements. And if you're wondering what that is, let's go to the next slide so you guys can get some visuals. Um, so you've probably seen some pictures like this scrolling through Instagram. A lot of influencers, if they're promoting a product, will post pictures like this. Um, so 3D still life elements um, is a three dimensional design where you're showing staged elements and still life representations of elements and objects in a 3D space, real or created. And this is a sharp contrast to the flat design trend that we've seen in years past. Um, so this technique is great for product placements or showing how something like might look or feel in real life. Um, these designs usually feature real and creative op created objects. Um, all right, and we can go to the next slide. So how can you guys use this for your school? Try testing out a 3D still life photo in a fun Instagram post, maybe by, um, you know, arranging your institution swag or fan gear in a fun way and posting it on Instagram or maybe like something cool and new that you're selling in the bookstore or something like that, just to kind of make it more creative and for people to, you know, stop and look while they're scrolling through mm -hmm. Instagram. You can also find mock-up templates online for all kinds of projects. And I think, Sarah, you yeah. were telling me about a website. Yeah, I use in, one called Envato. Um, it's one that I've shown on this, this slide right here. Um, they have a lot of really good, high-quality professional mock-ups. If you're willing to spend, you know, 10 to 15 maybe up to $20 per mock-up for like a really high-end mock-up. But I mean, if you go on Google and just search for a mock-up, there are plenty of freebies out there too. Cool. That's so there's awesome. plenty of ways to get started with that one. It's good to know. All right, and last but not least is the minimal navigation trend. So a couple of years ago, mega menus were all the rage, but now the minimalist navigations are starting to trend. They're taking a cue from mobile websites and apps, which is where much of Gen Z is already hanging out already. Um, you've probably seen in um, your mobile apps and mobile websites this hamburger menu icon, which is the three lines that, you know, sometimes it has the word menu under it, kind of like in this example from Drew. Um, yes, it's called a hamburger. It's I a very it's strange thing, that. but I love it. Um, <laughs> and so that's just very reminiscent of the mobile world that Gen Z is in right now. Um, and so this is essentially kind of the same thing here. Some institutions like Drew University, which is one of our partner institutions, have already adopted this minimal navigation for their main website. So how to get started, this is probably one of the more difficult ones to really get started, kind of like the augmented reality that we talked about at the beginning, because um, it, it's not simply changing a color or changing a font, but it doesn't mean that it's not attainable. You can try decluttering your homepage by testing the minimal, minimal navigation button contact your webmaster or IT department, and they might be able to help you find a way to do this with an A-B test. Um, you know, that way if it doesn't work or you're not happy with it, or you know, you get people that are talking to you and asking questions because they don't understand it, you can always switch back to your normal version of the homepage. Um, and always keep in mind too that you can stick with a larger footer if you wanna keep some of those menu elements visible. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for attending. We really appreciate it. And we hope you enjoyed our trending emerging designs and higher ed. Yeah. So go out there and be creative. Well, thank you guys. Uh, and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. You'll receive a follow up email within one or two days and we'll link a view. You, know, you will receive a follow up email with one or two days. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Edit this out. <laughs> <Written>. <laughs> okay. Um.
Well, thank you, ladies, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. Uh, you will all receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar. We've also collected all of your questions throughout and we'll contact you shortly with responses. On behalf of Capture Higher Ed and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and have a great day.